All right, Matt, Mom, let's talk. Talk to me. I just saw this the other day. I took my daughter to see a movie because there was, um, oh, man, I just got out of work a few hours ago, and I'm, I'm beat. I'm exhausted, so my brain isn't working properly. But it's, uh, what's that called, where it's like National you know, Cinema Appreciation Day or something, a customer, I don't know. Four dollars everywhere to go to the movies, day or night. So me and my daughter went to see Talk To Me. Uh, two weeks ago, we went to see Last Voyage of the Demeter. I was really hyped for that. Long story short, it was a bit disappointing. If it came out in the 90s, it probably would have been badass. But that was 30 years ago, so it's a little late. Anyhow... A lot of people, the reason why I'm bringing that up, a lot of people recommended uh, Talk To Me. They said, Ronnie, you should have went and seen it. Now, I watched the trailer, and if, it, if, you, don't know what, if you don't know what it is, this is the trailer here, where uh, they meet up to play this, this it's kind of like the new version of the Ouija board. They meet up to play with this, uh, from anyway. this hand. It's a hand in a porcelain. Now, I might title this something about, like, Talk To Me Too, because even though uh, we're not really doing, like, any deep dives, breaking this down, or doing heavy speculation and prediction, I do want to mention one line in, in the trailer that spilled over into the movie without spoiling anything. And I think there's potential here to continue on. I'm not going to say much more than that, just because I don't want to waste energy speculating on something that is so fresh and new. But I think there is a I think there is something there to continue on. Multiple different directions. Anyway. Apparently it was the hand of someone. So this was the trailer. They uh, grab the hand, they say talk to me, they let the spirits in, and it's funky and they can only do it for a few seconds. I heard it was the hand of a second. And then they got it back out of it. And th there was a good amount of hype. I, I was hoping we it would be a good movie. I went in there. And I tell you what, it was one hell of a theater experience. First off, there was a ton of people in the theater, uh, more than normal. There was probably like only three seats that weren't filled. And that probably had a lot to do with the $4 a ticket. Because my daughter went earlier that day with some friends to see a movie, to see Strays with the dogs. And um, it was probably a bad idea, though. I heard it was vulgar after the fact. I didn't do my research, but anyhow, <laughs> that was a fail. Anyhow, uh, she loved it, though, but she said it was packed wall to wall. Same thing for this. It was jam-packed, and because it was packed, you got a lot of response from the audience, but not like annoying response where you get a couple kids that are like, you know, whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, this, that, and the third, trying to get your attention, not really, you know what I mean? Trying to get a reaction from the theater, not really reacting from the theater. But this was a good audience, man. When, when it got quiet, it got quiet, and it was genuine uh, organic responses, especially at the end. I don't want to spoil anything right now. Uh, I'm going to wrap up my spoiler-free thoughts and get into sp some spoilers because I do want to mention it. Um, but especially the very end, the whole theater was like, ooh, you know, had the, but like a subtle, like they were genuinely um, hyped for that, you know. Anyway, so we went to see this and enjoyable, very enjoyable. There was a number of scenes that I don't think Hollywood, Hollywood, like the structured Hollywood, overly structured Hollywood would have done. They probably would have cut those out far in the in the scripting phase. But it was so fresh seeing it on the screen. It really felt like, um, you know, people kind of a, a fresh voice breaking into Hollywood. And it was very subtle. It was it, some of it was even just the perspective of the camera and how it was relating what's going on, putting you even relatable in a, in a way, putting you in the character's shoes. Um, anyhow, so uh, real good dialogue, a real, real solid I would say a real solid batch of characters, although there wasn't really any character where I clung to where I was like, oh, that's a really cool character, or I relate to this character, or whatever it was. It was just like, here's a group of characters, here's some interesting traits, you know, here's their friends or their enemies or whatever it is, and um, uh, they were interesting enough, but nothing really jumped out at me where it was like, yo, this is a favorite character of mine. Also, the the creepy factor, the the scares. Now it's hard to really 
to really freak me out for a horror movie. I've been a horror junkie since I was like six, you know, and uh, this did have a few creepy moments. However, I think that's probably the thing that's lacking the most. If you walked out of this and you were like, man, there was barely anything scary there. Uh, there's creepy shit in it for sure. And if, if you do scare easy is a bad way to put it. I think you could get some definite um, creep factor in here. But I would have to say that's the one thing that is a bit slacking. Uh, there's a lot of setting up what's going on. There's a lot of setting up the plots and the characters and why they do what they do. Uh, and there's just there's just not enough. There's not enough punch of that. And that's my one negative. If I can just step back from how much I enjoyed it in the theater, uh, it needs more creep, more scare, more. Um, I'm just going to go with the, the creepy factor. It needs more of that, that horror element to it. But um, uh, I, I'm going to get out of the spoilers. I'm sorry. I'm going to get out of the spoiler free zone. And I do want to talk, touch on a couple spoilers and um, I kind of wrap it up. But so I'm going to recommend it. If you haven't seen it, go to the theaters to see it. It was definitely a good time in the theater. Uh, and when it comes out, I was I was also looking up the uh, and the score too. It has a really good score for Rotten Tomatoes. High score with 94 audience scores, 82. Uh, even IMDb is sitting around a seven out of 10. And there was some other place that was sitting around an eight. And that's where I sit. If I had to pick a between a one to ten, I'm hovering around you know seven point five or eight out of ten. So I definitely agree with a lot of the the roundabout ratings for this. I give it a high recommend. Uh, there's a steel book releasing uh, overseas, and then for America we have these three releases. Uh, it's Lionsgate, so the the slip covers are off the hook. Now Lionsgate makes great. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but they make great steel books, but it doesn't look like they're doing this steel book. This is uh, alt alt Altitude. Did I read that right? Well, my brain is fried. And um, But Walmart has one. These are probably going to be really good slip covers, but if you're interested in picking it up, it's going to release in two months. And I do want to talk about the ending, though. Uh, a couple things. In the trailer, there's this one moment. Apparently it was the hand of someone who could right here where they're like oh where did you get it and they talk about it being a real hand in porcelain someone that can connect to the dead they cut the hand off i heard it was a hand of a satanist and this girl here she's like yeah it was a hand of a satanist and the other hand is just kind of still out there the other hand's just out there now i don't remember if they showcased what happened to the the hand because when they mentioned that out there I figured, it, you know, the hand was going to get broken open. Maybe I missed it and it was supposed to be broken open. But this line made me think that um, this if the writing is clever enough, they could spin this into a sequel. This could be like one of those weird ones where you don't expect any follow up, but then you get like, you know, talk to me too three yada 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 like the new franchise because i mean it's making a big enough hit i don't i haven't really tracked the numbers as far as how much money it's making but the word of mouth is really getting out there uh now one more thing though uh there's uh, there was this unintentional if you've seen it i'm gonna get into some spoilers just for a couple minutes but if you've seen it uh the kid everything's going uh, according to plan so to speak they're having the party they're doing this little you know new version of the Ouija board. They're talking to the hand and everyone's getting all freaked out. And it's definitely cool. It's creepy. This and the third. And then the kid goes to do it. Now, first off, the, one of the reasons why I said I couldn't really connect with a, any of the characters, um, the main character as well, she came off as kind of shitty. And I thought, I, I'm curious if this was done on purpose because first off, she leaves, she allows the kid to do this, right? And that's her her best friend's uh, little brother. And he gets fucked up, right? Fucked up. So it's like already her fault. She allows him to do it. Um, doesn't take responsibility for doing it. She's kind of a shitty person. That took me by surprise. Like this lead character isn't really a good person. She's a shitbag. Now she's not like a terrible, irredeemable shitbag. But she comes off kind of strong. 
now when she her best friend's in the hospital and her little brother is like super fucked up, then she takes, you know, her best friend's boyfriend, which was a kid that she had a little crush on years ago. She takes him home with her and and they they sleep together. They actually sleep together, like fall asleep together. Like even if there was nothing weird going on, what the fuck were you thinking? You know, like that's a shitty friend. You know what I mean? Like that was fucked up. Anyhow, so and I don't want to oversell it, but there's one funny part where uh, they get a little too close and I forget what made me think of it. But uh, me and my daughter both have a, a sick sense of humor. And, um, oh, I think it's where they're laying down and she like snuggles up next to his leg. And I, I just whispered something to my my kid. I was like, uh, she's she's got like a foot fetish or some shit like that. I forget what I said, but it had to it was making fun of her being close to his feet. And then she started, she was sucking on his feet. Yo, I bust out laughing. My daughter busts out laughing. Uh, there was someone else snickering off to the side. Somebody in the background just like uh, yelped. I don't even know if that was, it was like they were laughing, but they were surprised as well. Like it, it was guttural. <laughs> uh, and then the, the other aspect was, and I think this is unintentional for like 15 minutes neither I or my daughter could breathe. I couldn't even look at the screen. I was dying. I had tears streaming down my face, but it was after the little brother smashed his face into the, the thing, tried to rip out his fucking eye. It was after that. And they show him like in the, the, the bathing chair, the shower chair. And he's all, he looks like a puffy, um, what's McLovin. <laughs> He's all puffed up. It looks like McLovin if you ran him over 16 times with a Mack truck. But the the way they focused on him was just like stiff and weird looking. And maybe it was done intentionally. I don't know. But my daughter started laughing first. And I was even kind of like, okay, stop. You know, because I caught the, the giggles. And then they showed him from another angle. And I'm like, okay, sh you know, don't. And as soon as they showed him from that other angle, I don't know what it was, but I fucking lost it. He was so funny looking. And then this other guy next to me, he starts busting out laughing. But the uh, the one that did it, that was that added to the, the cool experience was the very end. And I love this concept. Like I said, I'm about to spoil the very, very end. So if you haven't seen it, go see it. But... Uh, this was the very end. I'm pretty sure this was it here where um, she goes. And I, I kind of wanted a little something exactly what they did after they did it. But I, I, I kind of wanted them to revisit where the kid was being tormented and, and go in that direction and, and make her, you know, the lead character redeem herself in a way. She does, but I didn't think it packed as big of a punch as it could have. But it was still great. And this is kind of like it feels like the perfect type of ending where they, they, you, they begin the, the movie playing this game where they're talking to dead spirits. And then in the end, the lead becomes the dead spirit. And it's such a sharp, like cut to black right after that you reveal it. And they, they did a really good job leading into that, where um, they're showcasing stuff that's symbolic and, uh, kind of hinting them to maybe what's going on in, in the, you know, in present day future, yada, yada, yada. So they're, they're hinting towards this stuff, wrapping up the storylines. And this is after she sacrifices herself, throws herself out in traffic. And then it, it does this, you know, transition between shots and then boom, she reaches in the darkness. And I think this is where this, that picks up. She touches someone's hand and then it pulls her from, being the one that grabbed the porcelain hand to now it comes full circle to where her hand is this hand from the, the poster. You get what I'm saying? The porcelain thing that they grabbed this thing right here, like her hand. Did I click on that? Right? Yeah. It's just taken forever. Her hand becomes the hand. I thought that was awesome. Uh, not exactly, but you get what I'm saying. I thought that was freaking awesome. And that's when the audience was like, no way. They took a moment. Um, it, it was just great. It was a fantastic theater experience. 
Uh, I do have to knock it back a bit though. Like I said, just because it didn't have some of that fear that I wanted, that, that creep factor that I wanted. I was really looking for at least like, you know, one one good scene that just gave me the fucking chills. There's a couple creepy parts. I think it's usually the ones that you expect, you know, like something creepy in the shadows, uh, maybe a sudden face. Um, I just I wanted a little more on that regard. But because horror has been so incredibly crap for so long. Now, there's good horror, don't get me wrong, but the amount of horror that we get and so much of it is shit, I, I give this a high recommend. If you're in the horror, go check it out. If you've already seen it, I don't know why I'm saying that because I already let everyone go who uh, you know, haven't seen it yet. But um, if you have seen it, I would definitely love some thoughts and opinions in the comment box. What did you think about it? And how do you feel about me just shooting the shit, talking about a few different topics? I know um, after work, maybe jump on every every few days and just run through a few topics just like this. Just me talking to you. It's raw. I have no time. Like I said, I'm done. My daytime from 7 a.m. to 7 at night, it's done. That's not even accurate either because I'm up at 6 in the morning. And I mean, I'm not I don't get to relax till like 7 at night. So I'm fucking go, you know, done. My whole day is done. That's going to be the, for the rest of the year. And in that little few hours I have each day, I'm going to work on um, edited content for the Flaw of Our Saw. I have um, stuff we're putting together for Doomsday Kingdom. So those are my two side projects. Right here, I'm just kind of talking with you guys for now while I'm in the transition. And then uh, Doomsday Kingdom, we're setting up stuff behind the scenes to really get that grounded so we can have a base. You can still buy the volume at um, doomsdaykingdom.com. And then my Flaver Saw YouTube channel for my really in-depth, uh, deep dive movie breakdowns of what we love and what we hate. So if you guys like that, let me know. I have a number of different topics I want to discuss. Like I'm watching Justified, the TV show, and it started out so strong and it just lost the plot. And I would like to talk about that. Matter of fact, I got to finish the newest episode. I just stopped watching the, the episodes or at least I'm watching them a week later and I'm just dragging because it's like someone who doesn't even know cop anything, cop stuff, lawyer stuff. Uh, it's like someone who has zero knowledge of true crime is is right in this shit. It's insane. You get lawyers doing stuff that they're not legally allowed to do, even in court in front of a judge. And like there's so much stupid shit that you can't do, especially like conflicts of interest. It's go it's going crazy. And they don't even acknowledge it, even a little. It's just poorly written. Anyhow, so I'd like to talk about Justified, but you guys let me know. Uh Justify what kind of stuff we can do. Like I said, at least for right now where we can start getting some stuff out to stay in touch and then we'll do some streams on uh, Sunday nights. All right. Uh, thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn.